to you and the, the rest of the community um, all at the same time. We'll see how this is gonna work. I think this will work really well. Let me, I'm gonna move my, I hope we're live. Let's see, I want to go to, how do I want to? Can they hear her? Yes, they can. Woohoo! I, I got it. I'm here. We're just going to wait for a minute and welcome everyone. Um, I am going to move my mouse pad over here so I can get that off the needle. It's a really big mouse pad for a really big mouse. Um, <laughs> Okay, welcome to our Long Arm and Loving It Guild. I am so excited to be here. Um, I'm Rebecca from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop, and this is a horrible view. Um, I'm sorry about the video, but I'm going to be sharing my screen, so it shouldn't be uh, too bad. But um, anyways, you just get a look at me and half of the ceiling. Um, we have a few people here in the in the um, What's it called in the warehouse studio with us? I know, right? In the in the we have a live studio audience. Um, I love that. <laughs> and um, we are uh, today. We are. I have a demo, but um, first, I just want to know if anyone has any questions. Do we have questions about long arming? Do we have questions about issues that we've so done? Many. Do we have questions about um, just really anything, anything that pertains to long arming? Linda. I want to learn how to do the wrap. So okay. Okay. You teach us how to do a wrap. Yes. I think we could probably do that today. Okay. Pages. So Linda said that she wants to do the wrap or learn how to use wrap. Um, it's one of my favorite features, uh, especially for doing an edge to edge. Um, hello, Joyce. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, and, uh, so yes, if we have some time today, I can absolutely show you since we have the computer screen and the TV, um, that I can share. We uh, can work on wrap today. One other one um, I had was, do you do a test strip down the side before you start a long quilt to make sure your tension and everything's good? That is a great question. Um, Linda asked also, do we do a test strip down the side of your quilt? Um, and I do uh, this two ways. Um, if I have a quilt that has a big enough back, I will add a piece of, of batting or an extra fabric on top. So there'll be just a little swatch that I will test my tension on. If I need more, then obviously I'll add more as I go. Um, or I have just a, a quilt sandwich, a small one, that is just off to the side. Um, I usually use it to wipe and dust my table off, but I will use that to test my tension if it's a big dramatic um, difference between my threads. So um, yes, I have, I will do one on the side of my quilt, but I also have one on the side. It's, it's a test one that's big, it's your, Frame. It is not. I actually just hold, <laughs> I hold it up against the pole with my hip and I hold it with my hand and then I just kind of free motion with the one, one arm. Do you, do you do this before you have set your cross stitcher and then, or do you test it after and then? I test it before. So typically what I'll do is I'll thread everything. I'll test it before and then I'll do my basting stitches and then load my quilt and, and all of that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, I hope you guys heard that. Um, I do have a couple of, of um, ways that I test tension. And um, if you have questions about it, just let us know. I have comments up right here. Um, other questions? Okay. Um, Kyle has, I'm going to share Kyle's experience because she's having a lot of fun. Yay. <laughs> Should we, should we share Kyle's experience? Sure. I'll, I'll let you see our live studio audience today. Peggy is up in the corner oh, over there. Nice. Peggy's hiding. Um, anyways, but Kyle has um, had some well, some adventures with her long arm and, and pro stitcher. She We got her pro stitcher set up. Um, hello, Shelly. Thanks for being here. Um, and we got, her, we got her all set up. And then she decided she wanted to take her machine in and get it serviced. So she went and got a serviced and um, then our tech updated her tablet um, after we had already 
put a, an older version on it and she got it home and it wouldn't work. So I went out again and um, it's not a big deal. It's like, it's totally not a big deal, but I went out to Kyle's again. I love to go out to her. She shed. It's really fun. Um, and uh, put an older version of cross stitcher back on because she has an older Avante um, and it worked perfectly. It's so far. Well, why has it worked perfectly? Work with the new one? I think there is a problem. The question was, why does it not work with the, the newer software? Um, so the, the most recent updated versions. Um, I think the, the issue is in the software, it auto detects what machine you have. Mm -hmm. So it goes out and says, hey, what machine are you? And the, the machine's supposed to send a response mm -hmm. and it doesn't. So then it doesn't know what machine you are. So I think that that is something wrong in the software. Um, I have already told the developers about it and they're, but it could take them a long time to find it just oh, because no. it's such a specific, <laughs> it, they could find it today. Like, it, I mean, honestly, but it's such a specific thing that they have to look for that sometimes they have to recreate it but before. You, but you found a way that I can do it. Because it, it, two times yesterday, it did, it said uh, error found Yes. So I restarted it and I wanted to punch that machine. Yes. Because I have to keep restarting it. And is that part of the whole thing? I think it is. And so as as you restart, um it wasn't any big deal to restart it. It's just right. Irritating. It's just irritating. Um, but as you restart, it's like, oh, all of a sudden I, I know what machine you are. So it connects. Um, anyways, but she's on an older version. Um, it's it's a one of the most stable versions and it works really, it really works well fine. with her machine. It's just not the latest updated, the greatest, right? Um, but maybe it is greater than everyone else's. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anyways, okay. I have a couple of, of people on. Um, we have Kim from Melbourne, Florida. Hello, Kim. Um, she doesn't have a long arm yet, but she's in the market and she wants to learn all she can. Um, let's see. Yes, I think that is, um, is that Shelly? Shelly says... Um, Shelly, uh, I hope that's Shelly. It just says Facebook user. Um, but she says, how do we know if we need to update? Um, I'm just going to uh, be really blatant and honest here. Um, I, I try to be as honest as I possibly can. But um, sometimes on, on older machines, um, the brand newest, latest update of ProStitcher is not the most effective for the older machines. Um, we, we are talking about machines that are probably five, six, seven, ten years old. Um, so, um, is there that big of a difference? There My is, running. yes, yes. I and do all and the things I want to do. Exactly. I think, I think there, there's just a few features that you're missing. I mean, uh -huh. it's not a big one. One of the things that you don't have is called triangle skew. Um, so if you, if you make a triangle area, then you can put a triangle design in it and make it fit perfectly. I'm just trying to do edge to edge. Exactly, right? And so it works perfectly. So sometimes if, if you're not um, working well with a current or the latest version of ProStitcher, sometimes we roll you back, which means we go to a, a previous version of ProStitcher. And in Kyle's case, it's 506. Um, it's on the, uh, the ProStitcher website. And um, it is working wonderfully for her. So can there's they, just can they put that one on themselves? Yes. Sure. Her question was, can you put them on put put it on yourself? Yes. I can walk you through it. You can download the instructions and do it yourself. Um, it's very very easy. It's similar to what we're going to learn today. Um, so um, if you decide you want to use an older version of ProStitcher, that is an option. If you're having troubles with the latest version of ProStitcher. Um, you just might want a little help walking you through, and I'm I'm happy to do that. That's what I'm here for, right? That's what I'm here for. Okay. Um, so, how do we know if we need to update? I hope that answered your question. Um, there is an update that is um, 737, I believe, is the latest version of ProStitcher. Um, if you're not on 737, you might want to try it, but the, the few people that I've had try it um, are not happy with it. So we've just gone back to the regular version, um, which is 506 is, is what Kyle's on. Um, anyways, if you if you have more questions about that, then just let me know and I'm happy to, I'm happy to help. Um, okay, 
So um, uh, we're just going to get started with what I have um, planned for us today. I am going to share my screen. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Oops, add that. There we go. This is what I wanted to do. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. And today I want to show you how we can download um, uh, a digital design from a website. We're actually going to go and purchase one. It's going to be a free one that we're going to purchase. So, you know, nobody has to deal with credit card information and all that stuff, right? Um, anyways, but it's a free one that we're going to download to my computer. And I'm going to walk you step by step through this. If you this have, is recorded, right? Yes, yes. This is also recorded, so you can go back and watch it again. Um, you can. It'll be on YouTube and on on the the Long Arm and Loving It Facebook page. Um, anyways, but if you have questions, please stop me in the middle um, and and throw questions out here because I want to make sure that we're all clear on what we're doing. So just so everyone knows, the best way to download a design is to do it on a PC. So um, most designs, they'll download to a Mac, um, but sometimes when you, when you save a file from a Mac and then take it to your Pro Stitcher, which is a PC, um, then it gets a little, a little tricky. So if for any reason you, you don't have um, a PC that you can download to, um, then um, just be careful with saving those files because you might have a few issues um, when you save them to USB. So what's your option then? The option is to um, just uh, ask someone else to download yes, it for you um, and save it to a USB for you. But the best, I've, I've just seen a few issues where the PC can't read what the Mac has saved. Okay. Um, it's supposed to be compatible, but sometimes it just, um, languages between the two, two computer bases aren't compatible. So um, anyways, if you have a PC available or if you have, you know, a, a family member or someone that has a PC, that's the best way to download um, a design. So one of there's there's a few different uh, websites that I like to go to to download designs. Um, the first one is ProStitcher.com and I'll pull that one up. ProStitcher.com is just where you would go and um, purchase or not purchase download updates, but ProStitcher.com also has um, a library of designs that you can purchase from. Um, it's, it's really fun to go through and look and most of their designs are $15 each or they are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, some, some uh, sets are available. So if you want like a whole set, for a custom quilt, then um, that's available as well. Um, but they're more than $15. Um, you can do a search uh, on ProStitcher.com. And then you can also sign in. Um, and uh, if you have the latest version of ProStitcher, it's called P PS Connect, then you can download directly to your tablet. So if you have updated to PS Connect, I haven't recommended that, that anyone with the machine um, anyone, anyone with a, a machine that's not, um, with, with built within last year, I would recommend that you wait for a little bit until uh, a next version comes out. But, um, when you do update to, to PS connect, then you can download from prostitute.com directly to your tablet, which is really, really nice. It goes right to where we want it to go. Um, today we're bypassing that a little bit. But ProStitcher.com has some amazing designs. A lot of them are more modern. Um, there are some that are very, very classic, but a lot of what they do is, is more modern quilting designs. Um, I'm sorry? Yes, they do. So we can go in here and search Kimberbell. Kimberbell has partnered with ProStitcher. And um, there are some, some Kimberbell basics. Um, and then you get down here and there's a Halloween set that goes with um, uh, Broomhilda's Bakery, um, Candy Cane Lane, Spring Showers. So these are all in long arm format. Have you ever used those on a large quilt? I mean, they look good on a table runner, 
but have you ever done a Kimber bail on a large quilt? Because it is so little and tight. So the question is, have I ever done a Kimber bail uh, design on a, a, a quilt? So I'm going to just go into this uh, spring showers and I have, the set is $125. Uh, these are all formatted for the long arm. So it, it, they've, they've gone through and they made sure, larger. yes, they are larger. They're not the tiny teeny ones that are for your embroidery machine. That's so cute. it's, isn't it cute? I think it's adorable. And I, I so, can't wait to do my spring showers in this. So all those parts can go in a line? Um, so this, this wagon right here is a block design. This is an edge to edge design. Um, this is a block design. Couldn't you, couldn't you connect those and make those keep going? You could. Yes. Yes, you could. Is and that with the gap thing? This, yes. This is not all of them. There's still more. So look at how cute. Oh, wow. There's umbrellas and mushrooms and butterflies. And then... I think this one is adorable if you just wanted to do an overall That's edge to edge. Uh -huh. All of this in the, is in this set. And then um, let's see, there's, where did the grass go? Why did you not load? It's having trouble loading, but there's grass and there's honeycomb. You can't see the big, big photos of them. I don't know why they're not loading. Oh, there we go. So there's a honeycomb. Um, Let's see if I can get the grass back because that one was super cute. Maybe. There we go. So it's not level. Rebecca needs to fix it. Um, we're moving a machine out of the way so Peggy can see better. And anyway, super cute grass. And you don't have to use these on all Kimberell quilts, right? You can use this on any quilt that you want to. And you can mix match. Yes, yes. So um, if you want the, the Kimberbell designs that they, they do work on, or they are for Pro Stitcher, I'm just going to go back. Okay, so the format, what format do they use? Great question. Um, I am going to go back into this one again because it tells us. Um, I know the answer to that. <laughs> so here are all the formats that you can use. B, Q, M, C, Q, P, DXF, HQF, HQV. Um, I'm not going to read them all. Um, anyways, HQF and HQV. So anything with an HQ in it um, is is will work with Handy Quilter. Um, it also will work with Pro Stitcher because there's a lot of, of people that own machines that are not just Handy Quilter. Um, I know that Lisa owns Regalia and it's a baby lock, but she has Pro Stitcher, so it will work with that. So HQF and HQV, um, the, the V one is a more up-to-date file and is a little bit more um, precise uh, digitally. It's just because of technology. HQF is just an older format. HQV is a newer format. So, so why would I want to buy the, old, the older one? If your machine, um, if, if your machine is older or post-stitcher, no, you can use HQV too. Um, but if I had an older pro stitcher that was 10 oh, years old, the pro then I would need HQF. Okay. okay. Um, your pro stitcher will also read QLI. So, um, if you go in and want to purchase a design that is not, they don't have the HQ, um, versions available, you can purchase QLI. Um, so those are the three formats that, uh, pro stitcher reads. Okay. Um, yes, that's a great, that's a great thought. They all have a Q in them, but there's others that have Q in them too. Like IQP is quilt path. Um, and Q, uh, let me think there was another one. CQP. Those ones won't work, but this, uh, this is an eye test. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm, I'm testing eyes for <laughs> anyways. So, um, okay. let's go back to uh, StreamYard really quick and see if there's any, um questions uh, is this the same software downloads do it on a pc um shelly if you haven't had issues with your mac um then i i would say go ahead it's just i have known 
to see that there have been problems um, just with reading USBs that have been saved on a Mac. But if you haven't had problems so far, I would say just continue doing what you're doing um, and then go. Um, if you have, if you start having problems, then a PC might be a, a better option for you. Um, but I know that you're a Mac girl through and through. Um, anyways, okay. So um, we're going to go back to ProStitcher.com. So ProStitcher.com Pro has so many, so many files. Um, and they also have a membership. I do the membership. It's $15 a month for two um, downloads. $15. Yeah, $15 downloads for... Um, exactly. So I really like it. Um, do they pick them out or do you get them No, you get to pick them out. And, and you can save up to 10 downloads. So if I don't know in, in March what I want then I can, I can wait till April and decide if, if there's something. Um, you can also select from sets that are, all of the, the designs that you can choose from are pro stitcher designs. So I still have to pay for Kimberbell designs and I still have to pay for other designers. But anyways, it's, it's the pro stitcher, stitcher designs and there's still hundreds. So anyways, I, I do it. It's a good deal. Um, and let's see, another website that I like to download from is Urban Elements. Elements is spelled with a Z. Um, they are really great. They have actually a lot of free designs. So um, if you just go into the search field and type free and select enter, it'll take a minute to search and then you can scroll through and anything that has a zero dollar uh, price tag on it is, is free and you can download them. I used to do this for testing a lot when I worked for Handy Quilter um, because I didn't just want to test Handy Quilter designs. I wanted to test other designs as well to make sure the software would support it. And so I would download the free ones a lot. Um, they're really cute. They're like nice I really, there are some really good ones. There's, there's a patriotic one that I really, really love. Um, let's see if it's on this first page. Uh, it's probably not, but um, I love this cute little lizard. I don't know. Oh, I guess that's a, supposed to be a frog, but it's cute. I love it. Um, you can spend hours. You can, absolutely. Download Downloading and looking at digital designs. And I have a book where I've written the ones that I really like. Oh, really? There and you then go. When I buy looks them, wonderful. I mark them up. Oh, so um, Lisa, you're going to teach us how to save these, right? Yes, I am going to teach you how to save them. So Lisa just commented, I don't know if you heard that, but she commented that um, she has a book that she writes down everything that she she loves um, on on a certain site. And then when they she numbers? is shopping, but they, have names. they have names. They have names. Oh, okay. So you can type the Anyway, so when she's shopping, she can go back and look at those and see if it's appropriate for her quote. Um, a lot of times these sites will have sales as well. So get on their email lists. I love their email lists and they'll, they'll let you know sales. Yes, Linda. Is there a way to take, I mean, if you're going to do a quote for a customer, to have this, do you just take them to the site and let them pay? Yeah. Let them pay? Or do you have a book that shows which ones you have? I don't have a book that shows which ones I have yet. That is a plan. Um, I don't know if you guys heard the question, but um, if, if you're doing a customer quilt, how do they know what designs you have? Do you have a book? Do you take them to the site and just let them browse? Um, so this is, this is what Rebecca does. This is what I do and what I've always done. And you guys can gear it towards what you want. Um, I typically go through the, the website and choose five to six designs that I think would look good on the quilt. Um, I've been doing this for a really long time and most people that don't know what they want, um, trust me to, to steer them in the right direction. So I will choose five or six and usually send that through an email or a text to them and say, these are the options. This is what I think you would like. Um, and I, and I ask questions also. I say, I ask who the quilt is for. I ask, um, I think, you know, age, age, if it's for a, you know, a child or, or, uh, an adult. Um, and I'll ask a few other questions. What is it celebrating? What is it for? What is it, 
so that I can get just an idea of, of maybe personality. And then I also take into account the personality of the quilt. Um, I will send them five to six designs. If you send them to a website, they could spend hours <laughs> looking at, at designs and, and probably getting really frustrated because there's a lot to choose from. So um, I choose designs that first would go with the fabric and, and the life or personality of the quilt. And then I also choose fabrics or choose designs that I don't want something really, really intricate if the quilt is really busy, right? I want something that's a little more open. If they want the quilt to stay fluffy, then I will also choose an open design. So um, there's, I don't know, there's, there's reasons why you would choose certain designs. Um, also, I think the quilt talks to you. I really, I really absolutely do. And if you don't know this or you haven't seen it, come spend a day with me <laughs> quilting, right? Um, so how do you show them? Because the files yeah. don't show the picture. So how do you get that picture for them? To oh, see? great question. So Peggy asked, um, how do you get the pictures for the customer to see? And on the website, I will just uh, either screenshot or save the photo of, of the design. And it's usually repeated. And then I send it to them and say, these are the things I'm thinking, you know, and that's why I give them about six to choose from. Yeah. And um, then they'll either send back me, to me one that they love, or they'll say, I'm thinking this one or this one, but I'm not quite sure. And then that way I can gear them towards what they're thinking, or I can come up with a different design that maybe is a combination of both of what they're thinking. Um, so I do a lot of footwork for my customers just because I have a lot of experience with it. And, and I don't know, I, I exactly. Um, I try to make it as easy as possible for them. Um, but uh, so if you ever want designs, even if you're not a customer, right, you're a, you're a girlfriend. Um, if you want help with designs, I love picking them out. Um, anyways, but um, that's what I typically do. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go back to urban elements. Oh, one other thing that I want to share with you is if it's a design that I don't have that the customer wants, I actually just say, okay, that's not in my library. Are you okay paying $15 to cover the cost for that? And then if they say yes, I just add it into their quilting. If they say no, then I'll send them a few other designs that say, I know I have these ones. So if, if it's a design that I don't own, I typically don't pay for it. Yes. I have found that if you log in and set up an account, if you've already bought that design, they let you know. Yay. Yes, absolutely. Yay. Absolutely. Yes. Lisa just added, um, I, I'm sorry for the repeating, but I want to make sure you guys hear. Um, if you if you log in and create an account, um, they keep track of what you purchase, which is really good because Rebecca is known for purchasing the same design three or four times. Um, I do. I really do. Um, and so if you can, it, it will tell you that you've purchased it if you go to purchase it, um, especially on Urban Elements. I haven't tried um, Pro Stitcher yet to see if that works, but I know Urban Elements for sure because ask me how I know. <laughs> um, anyways, I do it, right? Um Peggy, will you, would you mind grabbing me a bottle of water? Thank you. They're just by, okay. I'm, I'm fighting a cough, so I'm going to get a drink really quickly. Anyways, we are at urbanelements.com. Elements is spelled with a Z. And thank you. Um, and we just typed in free in the search bar. And... There are several that came up. Um, I really, really love this um, plumeria design. So I am going to click into the plumeria design. It's really pretty. Um, it reminds me of my trip to Hawaii. Um, and so it says choose a free downloadable file, either self print, digital, uh, or embroidery, actually, which is nice. They've, they've added the embroidery option as well. Oh, so, so like yes, you can if you're doing edge to edge. So that is a new that is a new feature I didn't know they added. But if you can self print this and create a pantograph, 
So um, Suzanne, if you're watching, this is a great way for you to get some free pantographs if you don't already have them. Um, so if you want to try pantographs, you can go through and self print it. Um, or we're just going to click on this digital download. And once I click on the digital download, it just, I don't know if you saw the little yeah. screen go up here, but it just automatically downloaded to my computer. Um, that's not what I was hoping would happen. So we're going to go in and we are going to, um, they've made it a little bit easier for us. Okay. It's from here because that's what my dad is. I'm like, where did it go? So if Magical you, cloud. right. Okay. Magical cloud. You want to look for this little, uh, okay. blue oh. arrow that is, or I can just tell you right now, it went to your downloads folder. Oh, let me see if I can. There we go. Okay, so on your taskbar of your computer, you want to go to this little picture of a file folder, and this is called uh, File Explorer. Um, it could be over here on the front of your taskbar if you are a Windows 10 user. Windows 11 has gone, and it's Windows 10 or before. Windows 11 has brought everything to the center of the taskbar, more like a Mac. Um, and uh, we're just going to click on this little folder. And over here on the left side is my home, my gallery, Rebecca's personal uh, cloud, um, my desktop, and my downloads. So see this little arrow that's the down arrow with a line underneath it? that matches this arrow with a line underneath it. So that is just your little clue. And if you don't know a lot of computer stuff, it's totally fine, but that's your little clue that that's where that went. It's in that folder. So I just always open File Explorer and go straight to my downloads. <coughs> and there it is right there, plumeria underscore one dot zip. Um, it is a zipped folder. So I'm gonna educate you about zipped yes. folders. Um, basically the reason that we zip or compress a folder is because, um, there is, uh, too much information to send through an email or to download quickly. So we compress it so that it will, uh, download faster and, and we could send more information that way. So we do have to, in order to read this, we do have to extract it and make it its regular size again. Okay. Yes. Unzip it. Um, a quick uh, aside, if I didn't have my downloads folder open and I just had this pop up, you can see this little folder is show in folder. So you could also just click on that <clears throat> and it would happen if you're logged into their account. What if I have never bought from them before? It'll still do it. Yes. It'll still do it on their free designs. Okay. Yes, absolutely. On their okay. free designs. And honestly, when you purchase the design, it, it will give you an email and you can download it to your computer. So it's going to do the exact same thing, whether you purchase a design or whether you are um, downloading free designs. Great questions, Kyle. Well, Thank you. Know, I'm so dumb at this. No, you're not. Um, Kyle just wanted to know if this would work if I wasn't logged in or if I'd never purchased from them before. So um, yes. And, and every website is going to be the same. You're going to purchase the design and then you're going to download it to your computer. Um, so every, every site is going to download the exact same way. It's going to go to your downloads folder. So I have plumeria.zip and the key here is if it says dot zip, it's a zipped folder. It also has, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little zipper mm -hmm. across the folder. So that's just oh. another key to you that I can't really open this or get the information somewhere else unless I extract it. Okay, so it to also it, says compressed. Yes, it does over here. Compressed. Yes. Let's see great, great thoughts. All the things I need to look at. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go to the file. I am going to right click on it. And right next to my cursor is this button or this, this uh, menu item that says extract all. So I'm just going to select extract all. And then it comes up with a path. This sounds easy. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't believe it's easy. <laughs> How do you do it, honey? 
Kyle says it's, it seems easy. <laughs> um, you're just going to download this video. <laughs> There's a package of cough drops just on my desk. It's called Breathe. Thank you. Just, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, Rebecca ran out of her, uh, let's go to a picture of Rebecca and how silly she is. Rebecca ran out of her um, asthma medication. You're not supposed to do that. And um, it's a little white and blue bag that says breathe on it, uh, kind of next to the phone. Um, no, this is, this is great. The other ones are just formulated for breathing better. No, this is great. Oh, thank you so much. They're doTERRA. I don't know if anybody, I'm going to, I'm going to plug doTERRA today. I don't know if anybody uses these, but these are amazing, especially if you have breathing problems. Um, okay. But these are yummy. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, sorry. We're going to talk about cough drops now, I guess. Okay, so um, we're going to extract. So we're going to extract. Okay. We're going to go back to, let's go back to the website. Where, where, yeah. Where's that? There we are. Okay. And then I need to bring up my, my downloads folder again. So it says, basically, it wants me to select a destination and extract the files. I'm just going to let the computer choose the destination because it's going to be exactly where I'm at in the downloads folder. So I don't change the destination at all. Is that blue highlighted? Is that the destination? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is your destination. It's in users, Rebecca, downloads. So it's going to stay in my downloads folder. That's where we're at currently. So that's the easiest way for us to find it once we extract, okay? So I'm going to just go down here and select extract. It's gonna take a minute and then I'm gonna go back to my um, file explorer window. And you can see the one that we downloaded was Plumeria 1.zip, but now I have one that's just Plumeria 1. And that's the one that it just extracted. Okay. So now if I double click into this file, then you can see all of the formats that are available with that's why it this. Made it so big because you have all the files? Yes. And a lot of times there's a PDF. So a PDF is just a, a file that has the picture in it of what the design yeah, looks like. Yes, yeah, so you could use this to show your customers or, or whoever you're quilting for. Um, I can double click that and I can double click it. There we go. Oh, and it opens is. and shows me exactly what the design looks like. And then it shows me a repeated design. Does it tell me any sizes or does it matter? Um, actually, it doesn't matter. Kyle just asked, does it tell me sizes? Sizes do not matter when we are talking about prostature, okay? So when we talk about prostature, sizes don't matter because we can make it any size that we want, okay? So even if the designer designed it at four inches tall, we can make it whatever size we want because we have prostature or whatever uh, computerized program that you have. Um, it's a little different for embroidery designs, um, but for um, for digital quilting files, it's, it's not that different. Okay. So you can send this picture to whoever you want and say, this is what I'm thinking. I'd like to quilt on your quilt. And they can say, oh yes, I love that. Or, oh no, I hate that. Um, and then you can so that's the PDF. go from there. So that's the PDF. I'm going to close this and that's just what the PDF looks like. We can close all tabs. Okay, so here is our window again of all of the downloaded formats that we do downloaded. Do you all the formats on there? I do not. Me I, I do. I, so would you? I will leave these formats or leave all the formats on my computer. Kyle asked, "Do I do I put all of my all of the formats on my USB?" Um, I just select the format that I'm going to use. Right. But I do save all the other ones on my computer and leave them there because that's a backup for me. 
what if I decide to change machines in the future and the machine I have isn't going to, isn't going to read HQF or HQV, or what if I, same with my embroidery files, I'm going to save my embroidery files as a backup on my computer so that I don't have to go download them again. Okay. So that's why we're only give you like five downloads. So like eventually you might lose it. Right. Some, a lot, a lot of companies now are going with just unlimited downloads, but some, yes, yes. Right. Computers crash. Um, you lose files. I, um, Exactly. So this one does not have an HQV format. So we're just going to select the HQF format. And I actually am just going to highlight that just by clicking on it once. And I have to show you how excited I am about these, oh, yeah. these USBs. So this is a crystal USB. It says my girlfriend's quilt shop. Um, it comes in this cute little box. Um, if you guys can see that. And when you open it, it's just this classy, classy sweet USB. I didn't realize you had to dig it out with a shovel. <laughs> okay, or just tap the box really hard, it comes out. Um, I'm gonna pass this USB around, but let me, let me show our customers at home really quickly. How, you can't see that. Um, it says MGQS in or my girlfriend's quilt shop and has the logo inside let me see if i can get it i guess you can see it yeah okay it is this is actually a 30 gig uh usb now you have to be careful because some machines can't take two big ones correct correct so i would not put this one in my embroidery machine but our our tablets that we use or our computers that we use for our uh, long arm quilting um they can they can handle it so I'm just going to pass that around. These are available today. They're regularly $13.99. They're on sale for $9.99. So if you decide you want one, um, they also, when you plug them into your computer, they turn green, um, which I think is so cute. The light turns, the green. Light turns green. They light up as they're used. And this is what we're going to save our file on today. This is mine that I just bought yesterday. Um, so we're just going to plug this USB into our computer. And I wish I could show you how cute this is. It's green and it's lit up. And okay, so it automatically opened this um, new window that says new volume D. So this is my USB. And if I move it down, then I can see my window, my downloads folder. Here, I'll just move them both up. So I have my downloads folder is right here. And then down here, that's the green one that's selected is my, my USB drive. And basically I am just going to click and hold and drag this file from my uh, downloads folder to my USB. And I just copied it automatically. Um, the other way that you can do this, if you don't want to do that, is you can right click on it and select uh, a copy and then go to your uh, D drive and right click and then select paste. <coughs> and I'm actually just replacing the same file, so we're not going to replace it. We'll just skip it. But. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do it. I think just Can clicking on it and lower. dragging on it is, is okay. faster. Click on, get rid of your lower screen. Oh, okay. The lower green. Yeah. The green one down below. Now, okay. Just click on the blue and drag it over to your D because that's your new disk. Yes. You can also do this. You can but I, I click on Plumeria, drag this over to the left on this window, window, and it would, it would, um, send it that way too. Yeah. So there's a few different ways to uh, transfer from your computer to the USB. I'm just going to double check and make sure we don't have any comments that I'm missing. Joyce Hawker said she just bought this one. I'm so excited. Have you gotten it yet, Joyce? Because it's so cute. Um, it's probably waiting for you at the store. Uh, anyways, um, 
Did so, they have them at the store? Do you know? They, they did have them at the store for a while. I, and I'm sure that if, if uh, people want them, we can, we can get some more over there. Um, okay. Questions so far? I've gone through a lot of information. I have a question. Okay. Let me open. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, okay. I've done all this. I've quilted my quilt. Uh -huh. Set up my area and quilted my quilt. <laughs> I'm all done. Not without six calls to Rebecca, but I find it done. That's okay. Yay! <laughs> I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> I just said the other day, I'm in tears. So anyway. I don't need that anymore because I'm not ever going to use it that size. I'm not ever going to. How do I delete it off my... Off your Pro Stitcher. Pro Stitcher. That is a great question, and we will get there. Okay. I promise. Okay. So Lisa was asking, I'm done. I don't need to do this design again at this size. How do I delete it? Um, we're going to get there in very, very just a couple of minutes. Okay. okay. So once we have transferred our Plumeria HQF, to our D drive. Um, you can do one of two things. You can save this design uh, or you don't have to do one of two things. First, we're going to eject this from our computer. Okay. Cause we can't get it to our machine until we take it out of our computer. Right. <clears throat> so it is really important. And I know no one has done this probably ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I only know about this because I worked with software developers. And also I have seen this happen with my own USBs. Um, when I was a handy quilter, I would just rip my USB out of the computer and just take off because I was in a hurry. And um, usually it's not, usually it's not, but I have, I have deleted lots of information off a usb drive just by ripping it out of a computer just really quickly so we do want to protect our files and and if you have a backup that's fine but this is just a good habit it is a good habit to get into so one of two ways to eject if you go into the the specific drive there's a button that says right here eject and i can select that button or if I come down to my task bar, there is this little arrow that points up or a carrot. We're gonna click on that carrot. And then you can see this little picture of a USB right here. That basically is telling me there's a USB in and it has a little check mark that says there, the USB is in your computer and I recognized it. I can click on uh, the little bubble that just came up. Or if I ta uh, click on that, then it says eject disk right there. So then I'm going to select eject. And then you should get a message. It didn't give me a message, but there should be a message that's right down here in the, in the corner that says USB is now safe to eject. Um, or, oh, did it? Okay, okay. So I missed that, but now you can take it out of your computer. The green light does turn off. So uh, when, it's, when it's engaged, the green light um, is on, but when you disconnect it, then the green light turns off so you know it's, it's done. Um, <clears throat> Shelly says, I, yes, I always eject this way and people make fun of me. No, this is, this is the exact way to eject and I have lost files because of it. So <clears throat> important files, by the way. Is, is this telling us if you, if you have the possibility to lose them, is that meaning that the files are open and they just exploded or whatever? Possibly. They just become corrupted is, yeah. is what happens. Is yes, it's it's being read, the file is open, and someone is, you know, you're using it. And then if you just pull the USB out, it just runs the risk of corrupting it. Sometimes which means your computer too. Oh um, yeah. yeah. Keeps keeps yeah. it open. But it just means that this, it's mm -hmm. that file is no longer useful. Don't do that anymore. Exactly, right? Don't, don't I'm not going to say do this every single time because I don't do it every single time. But I try to remember. Um, so even when you remove the, the, the USB from your quilting machine, try to remember to do that. Um, oh, it's Alice Barnes Wraith. Okay. 
Sorry, I, I've got a couple of people that say Facebook user. So I know Shelly is one and uh, Alice is the other one. So I'm calling people by their wrong names. Hello. But thank you, Alice. I'm glad that you do this the right way every time. And people can make fun of you, but you can just say, I'm not going to lose my files. Neener, neener. Right? <laughs> yes, Peggy. So then on here, do you have to use an address? Yes. 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 So, yes. so never and we have done. never been trained to do this. Rebecca has not done her job because I've never trained oh anyone to do this. But so Peggy asked if I have my USB plugged into the black box behind my tablet on my pro stitcher, do I have to eject it? The answer is yes, you should be ejecting it. Um, that's exactly how I lost the files on my USB is I pulled it out of the pro stitcher and I went downstairs to, to put it in my computer and it wasn't there. And it was, <clears throat> I will show you. There, I will I show you it, it is and it's just like a regular uh, computer so you're going to come down and there is a Windows button on your tablet let me grab a tablet really okay. quickly Okay, so there is hard to take it. a Windows button. Oh yeah I don't know if any of you knew that this was a button no. yeah. okay so if you have pro stitcher, you do have a little Windows button. It's just right there on the edge of your tablet. I think it's on the right, right edge of your tablet. If you push that, then that's gonna bring your task bar up on the bottom, just like I have my task bar up here. And then you wanna find that little arrow or the carrot and click on it and then find the picture of the USB. And if you uh, click on it, it will bring up the eject for you. Okay. okay? Sometimes when I go online, when I've had to restart it, uh -huh. is that the toolbar that comes up at the bottom? Yes. Okay. Yes. You can bring it up with your finger if you swipe up, but sometimes it's it's a little touchy and, and it's hard to get it to come up. So pushing the Windows key or button nice. is the best way or easiest way to get it to come up for sure. Okay. You leave the USB in the whole time you're doing the quilt? You can. You don't have to. Once you open the design, you can manipulate it however you want. But I typically, I think there's still a USB plugged in from me using it a week ago um, to, uh, to, the, to the 24 over there. There's still a USB. I leave them plugged in unless I need them. <clears throat> okay. So we... Okay, so here is Alice's, Alice uh, is asking a question. The USB port that supplies power to the Pro Stitcher tablet seems to be going bad. What are my options? Um, tell me, tell me why you think it seems to be going bad. Um, and you're talking about, um, Mine comes up that the USB port Something's wrong. Yeah, mine did too. And we're talking just about the poor, or just about the, um, first of all, tell me who you are. And then second of all, tell me what symptoms you're having, please. Um, and then I can address that question. <clears throat> um, sorry that your name is not showing. I'm not sure why this is happening, but it could be Alice. It could be, um, it could be uh, Shelly. Um, I don't know if there's anybody. It's it's Sandy. Um, oh, hi, Sandy. I'm sorry that you keep getting errors. Um, there are a couple of things that, that could be going wrong. Um, I'm assuming that you're talking about the USB uh, cord or cable that goes from your black box to your machine. Um, if that's the case, you can replace that um, and it might just be that the cable connection has worn out. Um, that's the easiest, least expensive um, connection to fix. Uh, a good way to test that if you're not local um, is that you can get a printer cable. Let me grab the cable and I'll show you what it looks like. <clears throat> I didn't know we were going to troubleshoot today. That's awesome. You always have to troubleshoot. <laughs> I love troubleshooting is my middle name right now. Okay, 
So you have a cable that looks like this, a square uh, cable that is plugged into your black box with one kind of rounded edge down on, on this side, it's rounded. This is typically what current printers use. Um, and the other end is a regular USB like this. Um, if you have uh, a newer prostitute, um, if your cable does look like this, you can borrow one from your printer if your printer has this type of cable and see if it's the connector. Um, that's going to tell us really quickly um, if, if it's your cable or if it's not. Um, so that's what I would suggest first is to grab a cable off of your printer and um, check that. If we just need to replace the cable, that's easy and we can we can purchase one and, and send it to you and it's easy to fix. Um, if it's not that, then at least we have some other options, but that's a good thing to start with. Um, great questions, you guys. Um, okay, so we have removed our USB from our computer. There's also a cable that is round. That is the power um, cable. So the one that I just showed you, Sandy, is the, the data uh, cable. So um, it's, uh, let me think, how the, the pro stitcher communicates, the tablet communicates with your pro stitcher. Um, the other one is just power. So if, you're, if your tablet is charging, most likely that tablet or that power cable is working fine. Um, so it should just be the one with the square end and the USB end. Check that. Um, okay. <clears throat> We have unplugged our USB from our computer, and now we want to take it to our tablet and we want to plug it in. We're not going to plug it in directly to our tablet. Um, we're going to plug it into the black box that's behind our tablet if you have ProStature. Um, if you have another computerized uh, uh, system, that's the word I'm looking for. If you have another computerized system, um, then you may have another place to plug in the USB. Um, if you're doing this on an embroidery machine, then you will just plug it in on the side of your embroidery machine, right? So um, <clears throat> I am going to go to Pro Stitcher. I have my Pro Stitcher open on my computer and we are gonna just make it large. Okay, so now I'm on my Pro Stitcher tablet and I'm gonna plug this USB into my black box and you want to listen for that sound. I don't know if any of you heard that, but it's a chime and it's kind of a do -do. Um, when, when it goes, uh, <clears throat> when, when the sound goes up, that means something is connected. When the sound goes down, that means something is disconnected. So listen for the chime. This little window will pop up, but you don't want this little window. Then we're going to go to File, Design, and then Open. Hello, welcome. Come on, you're welcome to come sit. Um, so we just opened <clears throat> what, what is our library of designs. Most of you have been here before. You have your designs. This is actually your C drive. So if I click this little arrow or down carrot to uh, next to my C drive, I'm gonna collapse that C drive and then I can see my D drive. We're just gonna uh, click on the D drive and then all of a sudden Plumeria is right there for us. So then <clears throat> we can select the Plumeria, select open, and is it really this easy? Yes, it's really this easy. It yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. This is the easy part. <laughs> it is this easy. Kyle, Kyle did say, is it is it really this easy? Uh, um, and yes, that's kind of been a theme through all my through all my life for the last little while, by the way. Um, is is it really this easy? Yes, it's really this easy. Um, I love that design. Me too. Isn't this so pretty? Now, all of you, your, your challenge that is <clears throat> on this video is to use this in the next couple of months. And, and then 
It's free. We can all download it, right? That's your homework. Go home, download, download this and, and use it on one of your next quilts. I think it would be gorgeous. I have a Halloween, or not a Halloween. Oh my gosh. I have a Hawaiian quilt that I want to get put together. I bought fabrics when I was in Hawaii. Um, I haven't put them together yet. But, uh, uh, this would be so, so fun, but this could give me a reason to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you following what we're doing? No. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, well, I don't have the computer. You don't have the computer. computer. Okay, perfect. I am showing uh, everyone, I, we have an online audience, and then the, the women here. Um, I'm showing them just how to download the design and then open it on Prestiger. There's a couple of other things that we'll do. And then we'll do show and tell. Yeah. Oh, okay. yes, we, we, we actually, okay. <laughs> We originally started at 11, but then we realized that runs into another meeting, and so we, we have changed. Okay. Uh, so go back and watch good. good to know. Yes. Anyways, I'm glad you're here. Um, we just had an, another in-person friend show up. So anyways, um, we have our design open. I'm going to get some more water. That's a big design. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you can shrink it. I Okay, so, <laughs> yes. I look at that now. If you have the Moxie, um, the Moxie XL, or, um, oh my gosh, the Avante, you might want to look at the size. It says that it is up here at the top, and we can count the little squares if we want, but... Up at the top, it tells us the width is 30 inches and the height is 13.98 inches high. So that is going to give you an issue if you have a smaller throat. I know for sure this isn't going to work on a moxie unless we make it smaller. How much room do you need between the design and your and your rails? Um, I like to have about four inches because as you roll your quilt, mm -hmm. then it gets thicker. And it depends really Ooh. on the size of the quilt. Okay. If you're doing a really big that. queen size quilt, then you will need more room. You're eating up your throat space. Yes, because you're eating up your throat space. Okay. Anyways, so it depends on, on the size of your quilt. And the bigger the quilt, the more the more space you need. So like on a moxie, I will not do a design bigger than eight inches um, because I know that that's um, on an Avante. I probably wouldn't do a design bigger than 14 inches. And so we're right at 13.98. <clears throat> so I would make this smaller on an Avante even. Um, you would be fine on an Amara or a Fusion or a Forte or an MR24, or in the Infinity, you would you would be fine on all of those. Um, the Regalia, yes, yes, that is uh, a 20 inch. So you are you would be good there. Um, but you would only be able to get one row, just before you have to drag, before and, drag. Before you have to drag and drop. Which I think should be renamed drop and drag. Yeah, yeah, because you, you drop your needle first, and then you hit that. Yep. It, is, it is named that you're dragging the design and then you're dropping the design. So it's, I know, yes, yes, I, yes. Um, yes, you're right. Okay, so we've opened this design and then we can repeat it. Um, I told everyone that we were going to work with wrap for a minute. So we're gonna go to repeat <clears throat> and I'm just gonna repeat this uh, three times horizontally, we'll repeat it a couple of times vertically. Let's do a couple more just because it'll look cooler. And I am gonna turn the grid off. If you guys have the grid on, um, it's visually- Where were you at? Where's the grid? It works oh, right here. Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's really busy for me sometimes. Yeah. And if I want to show something specific, then I want to turn the grid off. So if, if the grid is too much for you, just turn it off and leave it off. Um, okay, so we have our repeated design right here. And then we want to go to wrap, which is up here. So we have a basic repeat and then we have a wrap repeat. Oh. Wrap is what helps us offset rows or we can offset 
um, our whole design if we want to. To wrap horizontally, we need to be in the horizontal button. We can wrap a whole window. If I just do half the window, basically it's just gonna move my design half way oh, over to my window. It moves the whole thing. Like if I wanted to complete that whole flower before, I, I mean, I want that whole flower on the left edge to be in there. Yes, okay. yes. If you want this left flower to be all stitched without being oh. cut off, yes, that's what you would do. Okay. Um, you could do there is a button down here that says- the whole window? No wrap, it's half window is what we did. Um, so I'm gonna hit no wrap and it's gonna go back to the way that it was. Oh. Half row is what offsets our rows just a little bit. I think this is adorable by the way. Can yeah, you do that <clears throat> I can. So I am going to do no wrap. Okay. So now our, our flowers are kind of nested together. Yeah. But if we have, where's my, there we go, hit the half wrap, it just moves every other row half a design over, basically. Um, and I think this is really cute. It, it reminds me of a reflection on water or the, the little flowers are dancing together. I think it's really, really cute. Um, so it just depends on what look you want, right? Will you show me that again one more time? Yes, I am going to no wrap. Kyle, this is blowing Kyle's brain. It is. It is. Because that looks wrapped to me. Yes. Yeah. And and it, you, it looks it's fine. It looks fine, right? I'm not yeah. saying that there's they nothing wrong with this. Into the flower, yeah. But, but you have this, this you have this V right here. Yeah. And then a V here. Uh -huh. And a V here. So, so if. It's pleasant. Yes, it does. When we hit the half row. Okay, you have to do that. Then you just have a different space between each one of your flowers. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just kind of the mirror image, which I think is really cute and very whimsical if you were doing a little girl's quilt. I think uh -huh. this would be cute. You know, it, it reminds me of the flowers dancing. So the row arrows, you could move it even more. It could, that. yes. On the arrows, we or could less. move it even more if we wanted. Oh, my God. Okay. Or less, we can... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now yeah. the green is where you start, right? Have you got that many start buttons when you yes. do that? Yes. Yeah. So this is the circle with the X in it that's green is our start. If I was to wrap, let's let's hit the wrap again. Then it has other start points. And this is actually a teeny, teeny tiny stitch. I will zoom in on this really quick by selecting zoom. And it will, after you get the first row done, it would actually come back and stitch this teeny tiny little bit. And then this red is at a stop. And then it, this is a jump stitch. And then it would start um, it's here. Like a petal left over. Yes. Yes. Got it. I would totally skip that because it'd probably be on the edge of your, your uh, quilt anyways, off the, off the edge and nobody would see it anyways. How do you skip that? Um, to skip it. Kyle's going to make us have a six hour class. Um, anyways, to skip it, what I would do is I would stitch my, stitch my first row and then I would go to pro stitcher. Our favorite thing, Kyle, new start and end. Oh, good idea. And then we would go to jumps. It's going to take me a minute to get that here. So I would jump past this one and it actually, why did it not go? It should have gone right Down there. there. Yes. Huh. And it didn't. Do a new start and stop auto. Yes, you could do that. Auto twice. Yeah, put your crosshairs right here. Uh -huh. Hit auto twice. And then it would put your new start there. Awesome. Now oh, I have to start. Oh, just <laughs> stitch it off in the side where nobody. You could, you anything. could, absolutely, That's you could right. stitch it. Um, okay. Julie says, just stitch it. It's not going to take that long, <laughs> right? Anyways, I I love the different points of view. <laughs> Okay, so that's what wrap does. Is okay. is it just um and this is not the best one because I can pull up a different one to make what it look. Where I've done a couple where I 
done one row, and then the second row, I want it to do half. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Start with the half. Isn't that where you're solid. wrapping it, and then yeah. you can move it, right? Well, you don't have to move it. I don't. I never. I need to some, go to repeat. Some yeah. designs I've oh, I have. Oh, I have. Well, that's just one vertical wrap. We can teach each other so much. So vertical wrapping is actually, if I wanted to. I would just hit half window and it would have half my half my design there and then three full rows and then a half row. Right. So uh, I've done that. Before. What did you do? We you can actually vertical. you can wrap vertically as well. Mm -hmm. It's only the window. You can't wrap a row vertically because we don't have rows vertically. But originally this is what our okay. design looked like. And if I hit half window. Then it cuts the top one in half and oh, the bottom one in half. Okay. Yeah. You can change it and you can do less or more depending on how much you want. And honestly, with vertical wrap, it's just going to continue to to wrap around. Right. That's why that's why it's called wrap. I don't know if you ever understood that, I but <clears throat> yes, no, push them, push them. You can always undo. Yeah, okay. Does it undo it after you baseline? Um, it doesn't. No, so not unless you do a whole bunch. You do have to do several undos to get your baseline to undo. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> and it tells you on the right hand corner. Okay, yes, so we're right gonna try place. one more design. Some design. Designs don't wrap very well. Open. Yes, and this one is not wrapping very well. So, so we're just gonna go to. Questions? Uh, you know what? We should check. Hi, users at home. I forgot that you were there. Here, Bob, cancel. We're going to just check and see if you guys have any questions before we move on. Um, Everybody's concentrating. Okay, no. Someone said hi there, and um, Alice says, wow, I love that you put your name in there. Thank you, Alice. I hope this is helpful for you. Alice just got her machine up and running. She purchased it in December, November. No, December. And then um, she was finishing some some things, and we shipped it later. And then the machine shipped later than that. Anyways, she's finally getting it up and nice. running, and we're <laughs> so loving that she's learning. Um, okay, so one more thing that I want to show you, just unwrap on a regular design. Let's see where my um, are you guys seeing this one at home? I I minimized the window, and I didn't want to. So let's go back there. Go back there, then go back there. Okay, I hope you're still seeing this at home. So we are gonna clear our design. I like the clear all button. Mm -hmm. you, that clears everything off That's your screen. If you just wanna close your design, you can select the close button and, and selected, and that will close just your design. So you have the, your area, it won't close your area. That would be nice. Yes, so you don't have to redo your area. Yeah. So, okay, we're going to pick just <clears throat> a quick design from Pro Stitcher. That is a continuous line design. I don't know where my PS designs went. There it is. Continuous line. Okay. So, where's one that I know is going to wrap really nicely? This one. Okay. This is just Castle Scroll. Um, and I really like this. It's a really fun, just kind of whimsically. We're going to go to repeat. We're going to go back to horizontal on our repeat, and we're going to repeat it horizontally a few times. Oh, that's pretty and repeat it vertically a few times. So this to me, there are a couple of options. It kind of looks like a monster. It kind of looks like um, a carriage or scrolls. Anyways, there's, there's lots of ways that you can interpret this. But if we go to wrap, I want to move my crosshairs out of the way. Give me just a second. They're in the way and I don't like it. Okay. So in the newer versions of Pro Stitcher, you don't have to. On the older versions, you do still have to, but on the newer one, you, it's automatic. You shouldn't have to, no. Um, Peggy asked if we needed to select point to point, um, which is this button. Let's go to horizontal. It's this button right here. 
in the newer versions of Pro Stitcher, which is 737, no, 537 and beyond, 537 and beyond, this is automatic. So point to point is just automatically there. You don't have to, to assign it. What does that mean? That means you have one design. <laughs> Mike walked through and said, we just can't help her. We just... <laughs> Anyways, point to point means if we, um, and I'm just going to hit no repeat really quickly. So over here is a no repeat. So I have one design here. Okay. And here's, here's the start and here's the end. If I repeat it, it automatically snaps together. Yes. In previous versions, 506 Mine? included... Yeah. It does not automatically snap together. I had that happen. Right? Yes, you did. So if we go to this button right here, point to point, and make it green only in horizontal, it's only available in horizontal. Because you're not connecting the top. Right. Then it will connect your designs. Okay. Okay. This is so Kyle's funny. brain just blew up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So now That's we're going to go to wrap. If you don't connect them, that's irritating. It is. It absolutely is. So if you don't connect your designs, if you have an older version and you're not connecting your designs point to point, then yes, it's irritating. Um, so we're in wrap now. I'm going to go back to horizontal wrap. And I'm going to select half row. Guess what that just did? It just shifted every other row. Hmm. And now it absolutely does look like this is a guy and he's got horns Muscle. and he's muscling and yeah. he's anyways, right? But um, if we don't want him to look like that, then we can select no wrap. And so wrap basically takes I have the guy standing here and his head is right on top of each other, right? And so if we wrap, I'll do it one more time. Now we have him offset, which just gives us a nice, I don't know, it's sometimes more visually pleasing, sometimes it's not, but start playing with wrap. I love it. Yes, Kyle? Lots of times when you wrap it, then you have a big area and you've had me Yes. The gap. Okay. Yes. So a lot of times what I will do is I will go to, um, there's a big gap right here. Yeah. Right. And I'm not liking that very much. So I will go to vertical. We're not going to do this on horizontal because that's going to squish our design back together. We're going to go to vertical and we're going to close this gap, which is going to the negative. And now you can see that we're really okay. squishing him up okay. into yeah. those and now those really do look like horns on that little guy that is like flexing his muscles. That's what I was thinking. It looks like a dog's Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. There's his. There's the puppy dog eyes, and there's his nose, and there's his cute little mouth, and his cute little ears. So, anyways, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so questions about rap? Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And each time you do one of those things... Well, after we've done all that, we have the baseline. Baseline, baseline, baseline. baseline. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Thanks, Vicki. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, I was doing it enough, but I had a problem, and she said, you're not baseline yet. If it's out, baseline. Yes, baseline. Baseline. Make sure, make sure you baseline before you hit run. If we baseline, see my baseline is active right now. That means I have not done it. Oh. But if I select baseline, you'll get now this little baseline out. over here. And now it's grayed out. So you know that you've already done it. Okay. So if I make another change, will that come up again? Yes. So let's make another change. Let's um, go back to repeat. And wait a second. I can't do anything because I only have one repeat, right? Horizontally, I only have one because it made it all one, right? But if I go to repeat and then I repeat it again, then the baseline comes back. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for you guys being here and learning today. 
Um, okay, there's one more question that I want to answer. It was Lisa's, and she said, once I'm done with my design, how do I get rid of it? I teach everyone, I try to teach everyone to save your design before you start stitching it. Um, how do I get rid of it? So we're going to go back to file. I don't save. I you don't do save that. it? I yeah, where, where is save? Save, save is save. under file, yeah. and it's right file. here there under is. save. Come back to us. Shut your machine. Yeah, yeah we do that. that. Yeah, I lost it. Yes. everything yes. again. But, but it oh, doesn't save so, is so much easier. Really? Does it save the whole time? I you set it up. You give it a name. That's a great question. Yes. I totally forgot saving. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, Linda's mind just got it blew up today again. She said, I've never saved. I didn't know I could do that. Um, and then Kyle said, um, does it save your design right as just as you, um, have created it? Yes. It saves your design just as you've created it, but still when you open it, yeah. it's going to open it somewhere relative to where. I, we're, ne we're never going to get away from that. Oh, I'm sorry. Like it in the box. I know. Yes. <laughs> it really bothers Kyle that if, if she has her quilt originally in the area and she has to move it, if the motors got disconnected or um, if she turns it off at night and comes back in the morning, it's not in the box. I and I just leave it on all time because I don't know how to say There you go. See? Okay. Did Johnny say your machine up? Yes, but I forgot that part. Oh, he made me learn that. Okay. Um, basically, what you're going to do, Linda, is you're going to save, select save, and there's a couple of things you can do. You can save selected, and that will save it in your designs folder, or you can save workspace and that will save it in your workspace folder. Okay. It depends on how you select workspace or how you save it. If you look at the, the um, icons next to it under or next to selected is a star. So how you remember is if you save it under selected, then I have to go back to the star to open it. Okay. If I save it under workspace, which is the paper with the star, then I have to go back to workspace to open it. Ooh. Yes, Peggy. So does select and save your space and everything? Yes. Area? Workspace saves your area, saves workspace your design. Does, but yes. does, but so does, selected does not. It just saves your design. Okay, that's what I did the other day. It only had this much, not the whole thing. Okay. So okay, so you just space. save selected. I'm hearing Johnny say on this name, but I never <laughs> ever absorbed it. That's okay. It's great. I'm, I'm glad that we're doing this now. So anyways, you can save workspace, and that's typically what I always do, and then I go back. Um, I am going to show you a secret, and it's only if you have Pro Stitcher in from 537 and beyond so in the last couple of years if for any reason you forgot to save your design there is an auto save backup you might not remember this when you get home but that's why we're recording so you can you can know this but i'm going to save this no i'm not going to save it i am just going to go to pro stitcher i'm going to select quilt and i'm going to select run and I'm going to select proceed and it's going to pretend it's stitching. It's going to start stitching for me. I'm not going to let it stitch very long, but. Okay, see, there it is starting to stitch. So we're going to stop it. We're going to select cancel to get out of it. So let's say that my machine, my power went off, my machine closed um, everything. I was in the middle of stitching. Oh my goodness, I didn't save my design and I lost my power. We're gonna go to workspace. We're gonna go to open. We are going to go to the workspaces folder. If you don't have the workspaces folder in your um, designs, then this won't work for you, and I'm sorry, but then we can get you updated. So we're gonna go to the workspaces folder, and then we're gonna go to the auto save oh, folder, oh, okay? And the very last one is number one. There's five files that it will save. And as soon as I hit run, it automatically saves my design. So 
I'm not saying Linda can get around the whole saving thing, but there are ways that if you didn't save your design, you can still get it back. But you have to have stitched. But you have to have stitched, yes. Ish. It, it saves every 10 minutes, every 10 changes, and when you hit the run button. So I always just, anyways. I know, right? That's why I don't tell new no users this. <laughs> yes, that's, not, that's why I don't tell a lot of new users this because they're like, I what? Anyways, I only know this because this is what I wanted when I worked for Handy Culture. This is kind of my little signature thing that I got to say, look what I did. <laughs> um, anyways, I love it. Oh, I, if Word Perfect can save and Word and Excel and all that, why can't we save automatically? Anyways, so just know that if you lose your design, you can always call Rebecca and say, will you show me where that design is, please? Because I just lost it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, We have gone way over time today. Oh, my gosh. We have, I don't know. No, it's 1130. Um, so we've been going for a little while, but... Um, friends at home, how are we? Where can I rewatch this? You can rewatch this on the My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop YouTube page, or you can rewatch this in the uh, MGQS Long Arm and Loving It Facebook page. So either place, wherever you're at, um, you can watch and it will be posted there uh, as soon as we're done. So that's a great question. Um, you can rewatch it as many times as you want because we'll just keep uh, keep it on there. Um, before we go, um, I just want to find out if we have any questions. We've had a lot of questions asked here. Um, <clears throat> Joyce said, no, hurry, keep going. <laughs> I know, Joyce, I wish we could do this every day, all day, right? Um, oh, Shelly, I'm so excited to come see you. I'm going to Shelly's house in a couple of weeks, and I'm super excited to set up a new machine for her. She, um, she is in Truckee, California. Oh. So um, anyways, thank you, Shelly. I, I appreciate you being here. Um, they, they just plowed a road, so we're good. And it's not supposed to snow between now and then, so we're good. Right? I know, Joyce, you'll just have to come over, and we'll just have to quilt a quilt together. Um I will add more. Um, we'll keep doing more. Um, I just don't want this to be boring for those of you that don't have a lot or don't have pro stitcher. Um, anyways, but if there's any questions about saving to USB or anything that we've covered today, please reach out. Um, do you guys want to stay on for show and tell? Do, do we want to record show and tell? I know a few of you have brought some. You know what? I'm just going to let you guys stay on for show and tell if you want to. Um, <clears throat> Julie, do we, should we start with you <laughs> or not? I love show and tell. So if you guys, if you guys want to go, you can, but I'm going to, uh, we're going to add show and tell. And if you have show and tell at home, please post your pictures. Um, <clears throat> while she's getting her quilt out, I'm just going to give a cup. Oh my gosh. Look, it wow, is <clears throat> the Kimberbell bench pillow. It's boo oh, look, something Boulevard. Twilight Boulevard. Twilight. That's what it is. That, that is so is cute. So cute. And I lost my little. Oh no! Like over there. Got to get another one. Somewhere <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I just need to find it. <laughs> so oh, cute. cute. I love the cute little spiders. Yeah, it was. I didn't do the kit. I I did the embellishment kit, but I used my own fabrics. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Very cute. cute. I love it. So bright and cool. bright and cheery. I thought you guys would appreciate that. <laughs> And then this one's not quilted yet, but one of you brought one and quilted, so I thought that's me. Oh, oh my goodness gracious, it's is so cute. Like, yeah. They're oh, dinosaurs. So, grandson. so there is a perfect uh, oh, yeah. quilt design that we just used. I don't know if you want uh, dinosaur feet, oh, but oh, um, it was so cute. It's just dinosaur footprints, and it's on prostature.com. But it was a, a kit that I got, but I didn't do the kit pattern. I did what I wanted and collected other fabrics. And then I did a flange on the... Oh, good nice. job. Okay. That so is so cute. You can do the flange, quilt on with a flange? Or yeah, you can you if have? you want to. Really? Well, I'll flat. probably quilt her. She free motions. Oh, so cute. 
And then this one's a Christmas quilt. I've got all kinds of quilt boxes. These are the little tattoos that aren't quilted. One of these days, I'll get some. Oh, oh this is the, yes, my friend has been oh. ever. Oh, so wow. Ever, ever do that again. Oh, oh you guys, I'm this is gorgeous. Halfway done. I so love pretty. I Can someone help wow. her? Lisa, do you mind? Oh, somebody help her? Yeah, Lisa, oh. Lisa knows what it looks like. She did one too. Yeah. That is oh, beautiful. So yeah. I nice. And I didn't like the mouse on the pattern, so I designed my own mouse. No. You guys, <laughs> and Lisa used my mouse. Yeah. You guys can't see the, the, the quilting on it, but oh my yeah, goodness gracious. So cute. Oh, Cross hatching. Oh, and, yes. Uh, I hang my that sparkly thing six eight weeks and my little granddaughter will stand and read it oh well, she, she had to you. learn this poem oh in school and nice. she learned it before everybody so cute. Cute. So, yeah. cute. <clears throat> so cute we'll have to post some pictures did you have stitch on your work yeah it's hand embroidered i am um, i put them onto my Oh, I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Alice. When you guys teach that class. I'm just going to get some photos and, and post this on the Facebook page. Um, anyways, thanks so much for joining us today. It was so fun to have you. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and you can rewatch this on the Long Arm and Loving It Facebook page and on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Bye.